Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be doing a screen replacement for my Elgamar's 3D resin printer. Here we have the box that the screen comes in. It's a 2K LCD screen. It works for both the regular Elgamar's as well as the Elgamar's Pro. <clears throat> it is well protected packaging. Um, it's wrapped in shrink wrap and then it's taped closed and then it's foam padded also. So the screen should be pretty good when it arrives. Um, I picked this up off Amazon for 29 bucks US. Um, inside the lid, it tells you it's compatible for the Mars and the Mars Pro, not the new Mars 2 Pro. Um, but it also has links to YouTube videos from Elegoo on how to install them. Inside the box, uh, first thing we see is these glue strips for replacing the stock adhesive that holds the, the screen onto the machine. There's also a replacement tape for the ribbon cable to hold the ribbon cable connected to the motherboard. The screen itself is also covered in protective plastic on both sides to keep it from getting scratched up or damaged while you handle it. Now we're gonna put this to the side and start work on disassembling machine. This is my current Elegomars as it was um, straight out of service. Um, you can see I had the stock LCD screen with masking tape around the screen to form a small air gap between the FEP screen on the bottom of the vat and the LCD screen. That just helps with the pull force to um, make prints. Um, separate from the vat better. Um, since doing this I've had almost no issue with fell prints. Um, to replace the screen we're going to have to remove the front panel. There are two screws on each side. I'm going to start by um, this is the toolkit that came with the printer. I'm going to look through here to see if I can find the hex screwdriver since it came with some allen keys and see if I can use one of those to remove the screw. So now I have all the Allen keys out. I'm checking them to see if any of them fit. Um, fortunately, none of them fit, so I had to break out my own screwdriver set and see if I can find a um, hex bit that matches this size screw. Fortunately, I had a bit that matches it. So if you don't have a toolkit like this, I highly recommend it, especially if you're taking apart machines and repairing them yourself a lot. It comes in handy. And I'm gonna start by taking out the two screws on this side, and then I'll move to the other side and take out those two screws. Now in the official Elegoo videos, they remove both the front and back panels. Um, in this video, I'm only gonna remove the front. Fortunately, with my revision of the machine, um, I could access everything I needed to from the front panel. So I'm just gently slide this off. It's a, it's a very snug fit. Um, you can see the LED matrix that 
does the actual curing and you can see the ribbon cable that I need to remove. So first I'm gonna remove this ribbon cable that connects the front LCD by gently removing the tape and sliding back the retention clip that holds the ribbon cable into the connector. I remove the screens just so I don't damage it and I can have more space to work with it. With the screen out of the way, I can now disconnect the actual LCD that I'm replacing. So I'm taking a look at the board to see where the cable, run, cable runs and figure out what I need to do to take it off. I'm going to remove the masking tape, old masking tape, so I can get at the actual screen. Um, I can replace this later, no problem. Um, now I can remove the ribbon cable that connects the LCD to the motherboard. It has a, the same piece of tape protecting the ribbon cable, so just move it off. This one is a different type of connector, it just snaps into place. So it, I unsnap the cable, and now the screen is disconnected. I'm going to take this box cutter and get underneath one of the edges of the screen gently, trying not to scratch up any paint, and I'm just going to pry up on the LCD. Now that I take the LCD out, um, it's just held on with sticky tape, so it should come out real easy. Now I can get the new LCD screen and get it ready to go back in. First I'm going to take off the tape from the bottom side. Um, and once I take off this plastic film, sorry, um, once I take off the plastic film, I'm making sure I don't touch it because I don't want any fingerprints on it or any dirt. And I just slide the ribbon cable into in electronics into the slot that the old one came out, and I gently um, lay the screen down, uh, making sure it's lined up right and adhere it back to the tape. Um, press it down where everywhere the tape is. Make sure it's all nice and snug and connected. And then I go and I snap the ribbon cable back onto the motherboard or onto the motherboard for the first time in this case. Now there are some models that you have a different connector and the panel actually comes with a adapter that adapts this style connector to that style connector. So if your board needs that style connector the piece is included. So I'm just, right now I'm just snapping the connector back in and reapplying the tape. Um, the tape is still sticky, I didn't see a need to replace it. I'm double checking the screen, make sure it's in there tightly. And now I'm ready to re reattach the front LCD. So I'm basically doing everything in first order, making sure the LCD is right side up. I'm just going to slide the ribbon cable back into the connector. Uh, it's a little tricky because it wants to slide right back out. So I kind of hold it in place with one hand while I um, slide the retention clip back into place. And then once that is done, I can reapply the tape because it's still sticky and make sure it's not going anywhere before I put the front assembly, housing assembly, back onto the machine. So I'm lining it up. Um, it's a little, a little more tricky to get it back on because, like I said, it is such a snug fit, at least on my machine. But eventually, um, I had to kind of bend the metal a little bit to get it to go back. But once it's on, it slides right back into place. And then all I have to do is replace the screws. Now while I'm replacing these screws, I'll just talk about why I actually had to replace the screen in the first place. Um, one thing I didn't know when I started into resin printing 
is that the LCD itself that does the curing um, is actually considered a consumable in printers like these. So similar to FDM printers where you have to replace the brass nozzles every so often because they wear out or sometimes you might have to replace the hot end because it gets clogged. With these type of printers, you actually have to replace the LCD. Um, I think it's like 300 hours of use before they typically go bad and you'll know it when they go bad because it'll look like um, someone fired a rail gun through your print. They'll be like perfectly uniform or they'll be the same shape holes in every print in the exact same location on the bill plate. So just suspect to replace this if you get one of these machines. Now the screen is in place, all that's left is for me to test it. So I'm looking for the cable now to power it up. But before that, I'm actually gonna put some masking tape back on to the screen. So like I said earlier, the masking tape just forms a little small air gap between the FEP sheet and the screen itself. So it prevents um, suction forces from holding the FEP onto the screen and which could cause a lot of um, print failures which is the print sticks to the FEP and not the actual bill plate. Since using the masking tape around the perimeter of the screen I don't really have a problem with the um, FEP sticking or parts failing due to that issue. Um, I take, I'm taking my box cutter and gently scoring the tape so I can trim it because I don't want it to go too far from the LCD and let's just make a perimeter like I had it before. We can shine in a cloud, we never hesitate. Let us rise to the clouds. We got nothing to lose, I know the time is right. Let us light up the fuse. And I know what I know what I know what I know we're perfect, you and I. Here we have a finished install. Now it's time to get the power cable and test that it works. Now we can turn it on. Uh, the front LCD screen is working, so I didn't break that during the install. That's the first good sign. Now I'm gonna go to the exposure um, screen test to make sure the actual screen that was being replaced works. Um, I had to remember where it was. Not super clear, um, but eventually I find it and wait for it to load. And there we go. The pattern is showing exactly as it should be. There are no um, dead pixels in the array and everything's good. It's ready to go print. 
Um, that's it. Thanks for joining. Please like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in the content comments if there's any other content you would like to see. Thanks for watching.